G'day, Nathan from Ozziaka here. I want to share with you some more tips and tricks using the AutoCAD architecture roof object. In this video, I'm going to show you just some common errors, some common issues that occur with the, the roof tool. Now, I'm just going to create one from my own created tool here. And we did this before, and I showed you how I can click around to create the overhang. Just going to use the shift select here. And you'll see here that it won't it won't complete and the reason is very simple that I have the overhang set now I want the overhang for the rest of the building but I don't want it for that particular section so what I need to do is either back off enough to leave enough room for the overhang and you can see that it can't even do it with that much backing off so unless you have a lot of room the easiest way to get around this is when you click on that point there is to turn the angle overhang off and also turn the uh, slope off and you can see coming back here uh, now I'm gonna, I can turn the oh I want the overhang here so I'm going to turn it back on but it still won't take and sometimes you just have to do it the long way to allow time to set it itself up. Now I need to put uh, overhang back on here and overhang back on here. And there it is. And you can see we can come in here and those edges are both set to 90, which is fine. We just don't have that one set to 90 to get back to where we were trying to get to. Uh, let's see if I can pull that one across, I can and then I can come back uh, using using stretch I can bring that in and I can come back in and add my oops overhang as before now just a, a couple of things while I'm here at this uh, juncture you've got a couple of other things here that's your overhang that's that's the distance this this distance here you can actually click on this one and you can actually set the height change from there down to there so if I only want 100, I can set that. And you notice that it changed the uh, pitch down here. And that's that's correct. There's a couple of ways that you can do it. Some, some will actually say, well, if you want that change and that overhang, it'll actually change the pitch for you. All right, so you can actually do it different ways. So if I want that just to be 50 and change the slope, now it's gonna do it there. So there is actually different ways that you can do this. It's the same with the rise. If you don't want to put the degree in, you can just click the rise and, and actually add the rise as well. A uh, little trick that I might have to show you later, but if you've got a standard ease, oops, I would have thought, yep, see, there you go. I've been able to change the slope to match a 450 overhang with 150 eaves. So that actually has changed the slope. I'll have to watch the video again to work out exactly how I did it. Uh, but the other thing you can do is if you want to know how far the, f the uh, roof will fall, so a given slope, how far it will fall over a given distance, just a little cheats way you can actually edit your edge say if i want to know how far it takes to fall 1200 so there it gives me a very exact distance just a hint on that you want to make sure that your units is set to the absolute maximum because in using this in calculations and i'll show you how to do that later you actually need to be dead accurate um, but that's an easy way how to work out a set distance you can see there there's a little oops a little bit of <laughs> toing and froing between those levels okay i think i've shown you this one before if you want to get rid of a point because that will actually show an a line on the edge for your elevations you simply just drag it if it doesn't drag if you can no longer sec th select that point you use your stretch command and do the same thing Here's a common thing that happens because of the slight inaccuracies that it's very easy to do in AutoCAD. 
Uh, mine is probably because I use a setting of Osmode 191 often, which has a lot of uh, snap settings in there. And I often might get tiny little uh, points where it's inaccurate due to it selecting perhaps per, uh, perpendicular instead of a point. Now, I find the easiest way, I have if you set units and set it to its absolute maximum, uh, set an end snap to just, just your end, your snap to just your end, and then just use your distance command, you can come around and look for a slight inaccuracy. Obviously, I've created these on the fly, so that's not a problem. But you're looking for a tiny little inaccuracy here. So if I say, what's that to there? There's no inaccuracy. If I say that to there, that to there, and that to there. There's no inaccuracies here on these figures. They're dead. If I check this one to here, and I knew that because I'd stretched it. And you can see there's a tiny little inaccuracy. So set your units to maximum, and then you can correct it. Now, I could also select this one to here and see that that's actually in the right line. So it's actually at this point I dragged it across that way. Very easy way. Now I just I would just really zoom in. You don't need to zoom in. Make sure that I keep it square and I just want my perpendicular in this case to come back to there. And you can see that the the uh, roof object heals itself. Before I did that, you'll see that the roof object was missing planes. It's got a big chunk of hole in it. It can't solve. Interestingly enough, you note that when you pull it out of line, it solves itself fine. Obviously, that's not the way you want it with odd shapes in there. But it's very fine errors that will cause it to malfunction. So I want to select that and pull it back in line. And the roof object is uh, fine. And just quickly before I go, this uh, garage, carport, whatever, or roof of, of a shed or whatever, it's up against a boundary and you want to project a square image to the street, but you've actually got a uh, an angled boundary. You just want the normal ridge. You want everything to look uh, the same as normal, except for this boundary. Now, you might be happy with that. Uh, it might give you your roof carpenter something to do on the weekend, but perhaps... You just want it to slope, and the easiest way to do that is to draw a line and chop off a portion of the carport, and you end up with that uh, roof with a, a climbing side. Now, the very secret is you might pick up is that when I cut, I left what is a controlling edge, and it doesn't. It can be very, very small. It doesn't have to be any particular size as long as it's there. Probably, if you got it right down, it might fail. But that's all you need, and that's the controlling edge. And this is an interesting thing. When you set an edge to 90 degrees, it doesn't uh, have an impact on uh, the shape of the roof. This is the edge which holds the pitch, and you can make it so small that it doesn't show up on your drawing. And you have your, your, uh, well, your constant ridge. I've got a few more sh tricks to show you in that regard as well. Thanks. Cheers.